Okay, so let's go ahead and start on length contraction here. And um, I'm going to lay out kind of essentially the, our, we're going to try this with essentially another thought experiment. And this thought experiment is going to lead us to something similar to what we saw when we um, looked at time dilation. So specifically, we have some moving spaceship here. And now in this case, we're not going to worry about like light traveling up and down. What we're going to do here is we are going to place a meter stick. So obviously a meter stick is a meter long, but specifically you have to ask the question now, according to whom? So you can't just say it's a meter stick and, and, and assume it's going to be actually a meter anymore. Uh, and we'll get to that. But so here's a meter stick and it's inside this moving spaceship and I'm going to try to be consistent with my labeling. So I'm going to consider this reference frame S prime now, as we've been doing before. And if you want, you can draw the coordinates as usual. We're going to draw motion only in the X direction. And this will be X prime, Y prime, Z prime to be clear. And then now we have on earth, same exact thing as before some Earth Observer, and we're going to consider this reference frame S. I am going to go back and adjust these labels when we're all finished with them, but just to be entirely consistent, that's what we have here. And what I want to do here is ask the question, how long would this observer here, what length would he say this meter stick is? So, yeah, I don't know why I did that. So he's gonna ask, how long is the meter stick in S? Oops, not, not S prime, in S, sorry. And the reason why I've drawn those two little arrows from him um, is, is, well, I'll explain that in a moment. So just like before, we want to assume that lengths are the same, but we know that that may not necessarily be true. And in fact, it will not be true anymore. And you'll see exactly why that is. So here's how we're going to do this. We are, and it's, it's a little bit less, less obvious than what we did for time dilation. Um, this is what exactly how we're going to analyze this. Number one, we are going to, we're going to talk about what's called events now. So typically when you have like X, Y, Z coordinates, you talk about your, your coordinate in space. So you, if, if you were to list your, your current position in space, you have to list your X coordinate, Y coordinate, and Z coordinate. Once we get to four dimensional space time, we now, instead of calling it like your position in space time, that doesn't make sense because it's your position in space, but also your moment in time. And so really the, the way that we refer to this now is as a space time event a space-time event, and, and this is a definition here that I'm not writing up, but this is very important to know. A space-time event is an ordered set X, Y, Z, T of space-time coordinates that tells you the exact location in space and time of, of some occurrence, if you will. So that's what a space-time event is. It's just a fancy word for X, Y, Z, and T. So with that said, what we're going to do here is we are going to measure the space-time coordinates of, I'm going to call this not position A and position B, I'm going to call it space-time event A and event B. So in other words, I'm going, let's use red, I'm going to refer to the beginning of the meter stick as event A, meaning that it has an X, Y, Z, and a T. And I'm going to refer to the end of the meter stick as space-time event B. It has some other XB, YB, ZB, TB. Though those are variables with uh, subscripts below, I should say. So measure space-time events A and B. And specifically, those are in frame S. And then now what we're going to do is we are going to, now that you have your coordinates X, Y, Z, and T, we're simply going to do a Lorentz transformation to express those coordinates in the primed frame. Does that make sense? 
So again, measure the coordinates in S, transform into coordinates in S prime. And then finally, once we do that, once you now have the, the coordinates or the events as described in A and B separately, um, sorry, in, in S and S prime, now all you have to do is look at what is the, the, the difference in length in S and compare it to the measured difference in length in S prime. Uh, compare delta x in S and S prime. I hope that makes sense there. So I'll kind of, um, I'll go ahead and do this according to the, the um, steps that I've already listed out here. So for measuring the events in S, here, I'm just gonna label it for, for event A, I'm gonna label it as XA, Y, A, Z, A, and T, A. And th uh, same thing for event B. I'm going to call this X, B, Y, B, Z, B, T, B. So a couple things to note here. Now, first of all, if we're if we're aligning the meter stick on the direction of motion, which for now we're going to, we're, we're going to assume is true. Um, that means that the, the Y position and the Z position of these will necessarily be the same. So those two things will actually match. Y A equals Y B, Z A equals Z B. Now, in, in, um, it, you can absolutely do the case where it's tilted or maybe it's perpendicular, but in this case, let's just look at when it's exactly aligned with motion. And let me kind of write this A and B. So those two things have to match. Now, these two coordinates, when I look at the difference, um, remember in S, when you take X, uh, we'll say XB minus XA, what does that tell you? That's just the, the length of the meter stick in, as measured in S. So this is the length of that meter stick in, in S. Now, if I want, I could write like L sub S, but the, the assumption, the, uh, the way we do this uh, throughout has been if there's no prime on it, we know it's not measured in the prime coordinate system anyway. So this is in fact the length as measured in S. And by the way, what about these time coordinates here? So remember, you have to state not just the position, but the time. So when this guy looks out and he measures the, and, and he looks at and records the exact coordinates A and B, it wouldn't make sense for him to record the coordinates of A and then, you know, then look back up and, and then re-record the coordinates of B later on. More specifically, when he looks up and sees the meter stick, he's seeing the front and the back of it at exactly the same instant. So both of the both uh, positions A and B, both events A and B are measured at the same time according to him. So that's also going to be true here. He measures both events simultaneously. So the only difference here is going to be some uh, length measurement between the two events. Now, with that said, and by the way, this whole thing is moving at a velocity v as as a standard. What we want to do now is now that we have our measured length, and again, just assume that he actually has some values for those. Now that we have our measured length, let's convert. So step two, convert X B X A into S prime coordinates using, of course, the Lorentz transformations. And you'll see where, how we're going to be able to relate that quantity X prime, B minus X prime A back to this. 
So um, at this point here, um, as, as you work through more and more relativity problems, you, you, you should really kind of start to memorize the, the transformation uh, formulas. You know, it's the type of thing that you, the more you do it, the more you do it, it just becomes ingrained in your head like the quadratic formula. So the, uh, the coordinate transformation in X, if you know the coordinates, uh, uh, sorry, in, if you know the coordinates in X, to find them in uh, X prime or S prime, x a prime is going to be, and recall there's first of all a gamma factor, and then now we're going to take the position x a, and it's, you know, it's always good idea to check whether this is a plus or a minus. In this case, this is going to be a minus v times t a. So this is the, the, the forwards transformations. Um, the inverse transformations have the plus there. And then same thing for xb prime, gamma times xb minus vtb. So here at this point, if you want to take the difference of xb prime minus xa prime, um, by the way, that's exactly what we're going to call l prime. So the measured length in the spaceship is going to be xb prime minus xa prime. Now, I hope that's obvious why. It's taking the coordinates for the end of the, the ruler minus the beginning of the ruler as viewed in a different frame. So it still is going to be the length of the ruler, just measured in a different coordinate system. And now I'm going to apply those transformations. So this now becomes gamma times xb minus VTB minus gamma times XA minus VTA. So at first glance, this looks really messy, but turns out we can, we can make a couple simplifications to actually turn this into a really straightforward formula. Now let's look over here and remember, I took a second to explain why when the, when the observer on Earth looked up, He's measuring both events simultaneously. So it's important to recognize that TA, the, the time of, of event A, of measuring event A, is the same as TB. So if TA and TB are the same, when you subtract gamma VT from gamma VT, those cancel. So really, in the end, this just becomes gamma times XB minus XA. And at this point here, we now have an even simpler um, uh, solution because, remember, xb minus xa is, ex is exactly what observer, the, the observer on Earth sees as L. So this just becomes gamma L without the prime, and this is L prime. Or I'm going to rearrange it just a little bit. I'm going to write L, which is, again, the Earth observer's length equals 1 over gamma times L prime. And let's see, I have a little glare there. Now, before I put a big box over this and get really excited and start talking about it more, um, this is, I, I want to make a couple quick adjustments. Now, we were saying before that the prime frame was the one that was in the spaceship. Now, the ruler stick was also in the spaceship moving along with it. So, in other words, this length prime, the length of the meter stick in the spaceship, is actually what we call the rest length. It's simply just the length of it when we're viewing it at rest. Or the other term, as we used for, for the time variable, we called the proper time before, the time as viewed by a, by a stationary watch. That's exactly the equivalent here. This is the length as measured by someone standing ne next to it who's not moving relative to it. So I'm going to relabel that, and the standard way to write this is L0. This is the, you can either call it the rest length or the proper length. And then the standard way of writing the observed length by any other observer 
who's seen that rod, seen that the meter stick moving, we typically just call it L, or if you want, you occasionally see it as L observer like that. Now I'm going to stick with the with this notation here without that, um, because really this L without anything is the the measured length in any frame where we're seeing it moving, and this is always going to be the measured length when it's at rest. So I'm going to get rid of that there. Um, this is the observed length. So that's our formula for length contraction. And compare that to the formula for, for time dilation. Um, give me a second to erase the screen here. By the way, I would never say I'm going to erase the screen in like a normal classroom setting. Like you erase the blackboard in a classroom, but I'm erasing the screen here. <laughs> my, my mind is now processing this as a whole different like thing. Um, okay, so here's our two, I guess our two kind of first initial results of relativity. Uh, number one, time flows differently. And number two, lengths are, are perceived differently. So notice on both, uh, in both equations, the right-hand side is the variable measured in the rest frame. How fast the watch is going if you're standing next to it, how long you observe that meter stick if you're standing next to it. And remember, what do we know about the gamma factor? The smallest gamma can ever be is one. And as the velocity gets faster, what happens to gamma? It gets larger. So for example, I, we went through the calculations last time and for um, a velocity about half the speed of light, this gamma factor becomes, if I recall, 1.15, I believe. And it goes higher and higher as you get closer and closer to C. So what happens here? For time, the moving clock slows down. Or in other words, time intervals take longer. But it's the opposite for lengths. And we see that the, the fact that it's not gamma times that, it's actually one over gamma times that, tells us that the exact opposite, opposite effect is now going to occur. For length, G, T, H. The perceived length is actually going to get shorter and shorter. So time or seconds appear to take longer and longer. So one tick of a moving clock might take 13 ticks of a, of a stationary clock. Lengths do the opposite. Lengths get shorter and shorter. So what used to be one meter for, for your original meter stick now might only be a half a meter or a quarter of a meter or one inch. So lengths contract. And, and more precisely, by the way, I didn't, I didn't show this outright, but if you were to try to measure a length contraction in the y direction, what would happen? Uh, nothing. Lengths perpendicular to motion in the y direction or, or the z direction, whatever you want to call those, do not change. So if you take a meter stick and you hold it upright and you move it forwards like that, that meter stick, when you hold it up, will be a meter according to all observers. But as you start tilting it, the X length of it begins to shrink. So I want to be a little bit careful here. Moving objects contract only in their direction of motion. Obviously, we can't say that about time because the time only has one direction. But if you have three spatial dimensions, the only one that's contracted is the one in which the motion is occurring. Which makes sense, by the way, when you look at those Lorentz transformations, the only two that, that look a little bit strange are the X and T transformations. Nothing changes about the Y and the Z coordinates, as long as you orient your, your uh, coordinate systems properly. So in this case here, we see that lengths contract, time stretches out, basically. It's, it's the inverse of it. Uh, isn't that kind of cool? Like, th this is, you know, again, we've done very little in the way of, like, complicated analysis. We're literally just looking at this from a... Um, you know, an algebra-based point of view. Now, we're going to change that here in about 10 minutes, um, but, but I just wanted to see how, it really, it's a very elegant theory. You don't have to get bogged down in the math to see there's these cool results that happen.